Okay. I mentioned this uh, a couple of days ago, but I thought I would throw this in the slides that, again, if you are interested in taking steel design, there is no textbook, but you've got to have the manual, okay? This is what the manual looks like. Um, if you have a manual from a friend, sibling, coworker that you want to borrow, I'm not going to say no, but everybody has to have their own manual, and it's got to be this one, the one that's like the turquoise blue looking one. If you have a, a black one or a burgundy colored one, that's the wrong edition. It's not going to work. So as long as you have the current one, you're good. Now, if you buy it outright, it costs like 360 bucks. So the way that it works is I uh, petition AISC each semester for a coupon code. They give me the coupon code. I give that to you. And then you're able to purchase it on your own for 125 So way less. So, um, so yeah. As for digital editions, I, I actually just don't know. You may be able to use the coupon code to purchase a digital edition, and I'm okay with that. Um, it's 2021, just you're responsible for it. So however, uh, whatever makes sense for you. All right, uh, any questions? Okay, I don't have much in the way of announcements um, other than I'm still working on grading exam two. I don't have much left to grade and all I'll say is that the class as a whole doesn't have much to worry about, okay? You, you're, it's, you're good. So, um, so yeah, if there was some 30 average looming, you know, I'd tell you. But as, as I've said before, if, the, if this class got an average of a 30 on the exam, that would not be a problem with the class. That would be a problem with me, okay? So, uh, so yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, we're talking about math stand today again. Um, who did not get the handout from Monday? They didn't have these in the tree stand? You hear that, him? I know things about stuff, you know. Here you go. <laughs> What's that? I, I don't care if you're in a tree stand or not. Just I treat you like a grown up, you know. You could be in a tree stand. Okay. All right. So, so that we're clear. Um, I want everybody to pay attention up here. Today, uh, uh, what we did last time is we introduced the basics of Mastan. Um, and we actually spent a little bit more time talking about matrix analysis in general. We're not going to do much of that today. Today's going to be pretty basic. But <coughs> the big, I guess, I don't know, concepts I want you to understand are things like your sign convention, the overall process. You know, what, uh, what mass stands doing in the background, um, you know, the whole concept of writing a stiffness matrix and so on and so forth. I just want you to have an idea about that. The steps to create and run a mass stand model are the same for the problem we do today as, uh, as opposed to the problem we did last time. You create the geometry, the nodes, the elements, the connections, which is what we're going to use today. We didn't use that last time. Uh, you assign the properties. You assign the conditions. Conditions being your support conditions, your, your uh, pin, roller, fixed support, all that. Uh, and then your uh, loads. Uh, you then analyze the structure and post-process the results. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to do a beam uh, model. And that model is going to require us to do some things that we didn't have to do Monday. So we're going to have to uh, explore uh, how to model internal hinges. Uh, we're going to have to uh, uh, build a custom section. So before... We had the W12 by 22, and we were able to just use the database. We have to create one ourselves now. Um, we have to do fixed supports, applied moments, uniformly distributed loads. This is the problem that we're going to do today. And I want to show you something, because this is kind of important. I want everybody to watch this. Okay? So this is the problem. This is statically determinate. Um, I, I sort of made this one up a little bit, borrowed off of something in the book, and sort of tweaked it a bit. Um, but I want you to uh, take a look at this and then this. This 
is the analytical model. If you remember from the model that we did on Monday, we had the truss and then I had that analytical model representation with nodes and elements, okay? Now, I want you to notice this right here. This is not a typo, this is supposed to be there. I have a four noded structure with three elements and then this element here, I got this little green circle there. That little green circle is an end connection. What I'm going to do is release the end moments on this member and make the hinge. That's how we're going to do the hinge. Okay. Now this problem also has some stuff that's different from before. We have distributed loads. We have a moment. We have a fixed support. So we're going to have to handle all of that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand out the, the handout for the, uh, the example today. You'll be able to work on this on your own. But I'm going to talk about a, a couple of things uh, as we uh, build it. The one thing to note uh, beyond everything I've already discussed is that this problem is not uh, utilizing a W12 by 22. I gave you <coughs> the I value, and you're going to have to build that. All right. <coughs> Here's that. So if you haven't already done so, uh, get out your laptops, open up Mass Stand. Now I'll walk through and do some of this with you, but there's a couple of things that I'm going to highlight um, as you're working through this. So um, first off, defining the nodes and elements, no different. Okay. We still are able to use this approach here where we were able to input instead of like 192, we can just do 16 times 12 and mass 10 will take account of the, uh, of the units. Um, remember, we do have to use a consistent unit system. Um, and we're going to have three elements, one from one to two, two to three, three to four. For this problem, it is incredibly important that you define the elements from left to right, lower number node to higher number node. Uh, and we do that because uh, we want our shear diagram to look correct, if you will. If you draw the elements from right to left, your shear diagram will be inverted. It'll be upside down. Okay. All right. Now, um, I want to show you this. I want everybody to sort of pay attention to this part up here. We need to look how to do an internal hinge. So the way that you operate an internal hinge is that you have to change the stiffness properties at the end of the element, and you do this by defining a connection in mast hand. When you go to the definition uh, 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 menu for defining a connection, there are two options. There's a flexural connection and a torsion connection. We're going to do a flexural connection because a hinge releases moment. It doesn't release torsion. Now to do this, we place a node wherever the hinge is supposed to be, which is why we have a noded end too, and we release the moment from one of the member ends. So what we're going to do for our problem, just so you're aware, is we, have, we are going to release the moment at the right end of element one. We could just as easily release the moment on the left end of element two. It doesn't matter. You can do either one. You'll get the same answer. Um, what you don't want to do is release both. If you release both, you will create most likely an unstable structure, okay? Um, the idea is like, remember what an internal, like this is the simplest way of describing it. If we have a problem with R is 4 and E sub C is 1, then I is 0, right? And that E sub C comes from the definition, let's say, of a single connection. And if I were to make that 2, then that would become negative 1, and that would be unstable. Like, that is not quite what's going on, but that's a really simple explanation of what's going on. So if you release both ends, you will create an unstable structure. It does not matter which side you release. You just need to do one of them. So to define the connection, what you do is you go to geometry, define connection, flexure, click on an element. In this case, we'll do element 1, and on the side with the hinge, change the option from rigid to pinned. And you'll see that the stiffnesses go from like infinity to zero because a hinge doesn't have any flexural stiffness. 
Um, hit success, uh, and you'll see a little circle pop up. So let's let's do that together. Let's hit escape. So here's Mastan. Geometry, define node. Okay, so here's the problem. So what do we have here? Uh, where'd my, oh, I left my hand out up here. So these are in 16 foot increments. So we'll do zero, zero, zero. Hit apply. We'll do 16 times 12, hit apply. Do 32 times 12, hit apply. 48 times 12, hit apply. There's our four nodes. Hit cancel to get out of the node generation. Element definition. So we go from left to right. Node 1 to node 2. Hit apply. Node 2 to node 3. Hit apply. Node 3 to node 4. Hit apply. Cancel. And now here's the new stuff. We go to geometry, define connection, flexure. We click element one, and we're here on the bottom. We have these drop down menus where it says node I and node J. Node I is the first node, and node J is the second node. So that's another reason why I always tend to define from lower number node to higher number node. So I always know that node J is the higher number node, for example. And so on node J, we're going to change this from rigid to pinned. Okay? So hit apply. And hit cancel, and now you can see that little circle. Here it's orange, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Here's that circle, and this in indicates that the moment has been released at that, uh, uh, at that end. Does that make sense? So after geometry creation, this is what your model should look like. Remember, the members are dashed, like they're dash dotted. What does it mean when the elements are dash dotted? There's no material properties. There's no material properties or section properties. Okay? When you do attach material and section properties, what does it look like? They're solid. So if all of your members are solid, that means that they all have material and, and uh, section definitions. Okay. Now, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Let me close Teams. So, all right, I want to um, make sure that everybody has been able to get to this point. Is there anybody that's having any problems getting to this point? Yes? Um, I was still trying to do the... Uh... The connection. Okay, so go to geometry, define connections, flexure. Okay, and what you're going to do is pick element one, like actually select that on the screen, and then change node J to pinned. And now hit apply. And then hit cancel. Oh, you did? You, okay. I, th I think you might have drawn your elements backwards. Did you draw your element from here to here? Oh, no. Let me see. I think, no, I, don't. Yeah. I think you did because, all right, so geometry. What we're going to do is remove all your elements. And we'll, we'll redo those. Okay, so geometry, define element. Make sure that when you do that, you go from this side to this side. Because you went like that, and that's why it thought that was node J. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it, it actually won't change your answer, but if you model it the other way, your shear diagram will be upside down. Now, let's go to geometry, define connections. We go to this drop down and there. There it is. All right. Everybody else good? Does anybody have any questions about modeling the, uh, um, the hinge and whatnot? I'm, I'm getting there. You're getting there. I think. Okay. 
Just E1, there's only one hinge on the problem, right? If I do this, and then hit apply. Hit apply. There you go. That's it. Don't do both. Like, don't do the right end of E1 and the left end of E2. Just do one. It doesn't matter which. Okay. Defining properties. Okay. I want everybody to kind of watch this because you can stop for a sec if you're modeling because I kind of want this to make sense. Okay. So, whenever you're defining section materials, you do that the same way. Um, but for this example, we can't use the AISC shape database. If you remember the last time when we had a W12 by 22, we just like, built it and said, oh, here's our member. We actually have to define them. For a beam or frame analysis, we have to define both an area and a moment of inertia. What's the problem with the uh, this beam? Did I give you an area? No, I didn't. Here's the thing. The area doesn't matter, okay? Because all of the loads are transverse. There's no load along the axis of the member. So we could put anything in for the area and it won't change our answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an area in of one. Um, it won't change anything. For the moment of inertia, what we're doing for the moment of inertia is we're going to input the Z, um, uh, the, the value for the Z axis. Remember how that works for um, uh, moments in 2D? If you have a moment in 2D, like if this is your X axis, this is your Y axis, what axis do the moments rotate about? They rotate about the z-axis, right? So all of your moment expressions in two dimensions are going to reference the z-axis. So when we define boundary conditions and we have a fixed support, we're going to fix the rotation about the z-axis. When we define a concentrated moment, it is a concentrated moment about the z-axis. Okay. Again, area is 1. So you should be able to go through that on your own. Um, I'll go through it with you. When it's all said and done, you should have solid members. So, we'll do properties. Let's do the material first. It actually doesn't matter what order you do it in. You can do the material, then the section, or the section, then the material. You just have to do both. So, properties, define material. Let's call the material concrete for this problem, since this um, value is probably more akin to concrete. Make the E4000, and then we need to apply this to every member. So we go to properties, attach material to all members, hit apply. And there you go. And now here's the members, but they're not solid, right? So like the way mast hand works is like, if your members look like this, this is no properties. If they look like this, this is no material. This is no section. And this is both. So you want them to be solid. So, so now properties define section. What I'm going to do is call it custom section. So custom one, since I'm having to make it, make an area of one and an IZ of 15,000. If you wanted, you could also define a value for IY. It will not affect a 2D analysis because IY would be its strength in and out of the screen. So we're not, we're not using that. Hit apply, cancel, properties, attach section to all elements, apply. And so again, you should have solid elements across the board. Sound good? Now, what I tried to do for this slide is sort of summarize all the new stuff in relation to loads and fixities. So for fixities, our beam has a fixed support at the first node. So we're going to define a fixity with the following restraints. It's restraint in the x direction, restraint in the y direction, but the rotation is around the z direction. Okay, So that's our, that's our support condition for the fixed support at N1. 
We also have that um, roller supported in three, so don't forget that. For the forces and moments, we have an applied force and an applied moment at N4. Now, the applied force is going downward, right? So here's the structure. The applied force on uh, this uh, joint is going down. So that's um, negative 40 since it's acting downward. And for the moment, the moment is clockwise. And if you remember, clockwise moments are negative. So we're going to have a negative moment. But we don't put 200. See on the, on the structure, it's 200. We put 200 times 12 because this has got to be in inch kits, okay? And for uniform loads, this is the new one. The uniform load is acting along elements E1 and E2. It's negative, so it's acting uh, downward. It's acting along the Y direction, and the magnitude is 0.9 divided by 12 because if it's 0.9 kips per foot, it's like 0.075 kips per inch. Remember, consistent units, kips and inches. So... Let's do that together. So conditions, fixities. So we're going to select N1, X displacement, Y displacement, Z rotation. Hit apply. And what you should see is now X, Y, and the moment. Those are all the reactions that would take place at joint one or node one. Clear this. Hit node three. Now, if you hit apply, it puts all those reactions there. Remember, mass tan retains these check marks. So all you have to do is click node three, uncheck the ones that you don't want. So we don't want Z rotation. We don't want X displacement, hit apply. That's the only one we want. We have a roller support uh, at N3. Yes? Why is Z rotation not still the lower one here now? Let's see. I'm going to go back over here. All right. Loads, let's do the forces and moments at N4. So we have a force at N4 that's negative 40 on the Y. And then we have a moment at N4 that is negative 200 times 12. Now, the only thing left, anal or, uh, conditions, uniform loads, E1 and E2, negative 0 0.9 divided by 12. And so that's what it should look like. I'm going to stop for a second and see if everybody is able to get to this point. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> You've got your load on. What you can do is go to conditions, go to forces. Okay. Yep. Now click node 3 and make the load, see where it says 0? Now hit apply. Now it goes away. Basically what you're doing is telling it, no, I want the load to be 0. All right. Anybody have any issues getting to this point? Yes. How would you remove the internal hinge? Okay, so uh, here's what I would do. Go to Define Connections Flexure and just redefine it. Now, did you put it on node I? Uh, well, hit, hit node J for pinned. And hit apply. Okay, 
So you drew your element backwards. Or wait, no, okay, never mind. No, you didn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're good. Yeah. One of the things about mast hand as a way of fixing errors is that if something's wrong, you could sort of just redefine it. Like if you have a load that's on the wrong joint, you can go to that wrong joint and say, make the load zero, and it'll fix it. Any questions? All right. Now, just so everybody is aware, when you do the analysis, you're going to do a planar frame analysis. Now, you're thinking to yourself, it's a beam. Why are we doing a frame analysis? The difference in matrix land between trusses and frames is trusses only consider axial behavior, frames consider axial and flexure. So from a mechanics standpoint, there's no difference between how a beam element behaves and how a frame element behaves. Okay? Um, when you take a course in matrix analysis, the only difference between beams and frame elements is frame elements can be oriented at different orientations, whereas beams are all along single line. So what we're going to do is do a first order elastic analysis and do a planar frame in the XY. When it's done, you should get this message here, applied load ratio equals one, success uh, analysis complete. And what that means is that at a uh, mast hand, see, whenever you're doing, right, let me get the, I'll get you in a sec. Whenever you get, a, a, whenever you do a nonlinear analysis, mast hand will increment the load. It'll put a little bit of the load and then a little bit more load and then a little bit more load in order to get your answer. And um, what, uh, whenever it gets to an applied load ratio of one, it means you have applied 100% of the load. So you might build a nonlinear model and the beam might fail at 87%. It might say failure occurred at load ratio 0.87 or something like that. All right. Let's see. Yes, sir. How do I change this? I've got the moment going the wrong way. So what you do, you go to conditions. Define moments and just define it again. Okay. Go here and say, no, damn it, it was supposed to be negative times 12 and hit apply. My problem is I just put the 2400 in. And That's fine. Pay attention to being a negative sign. That but the thing, the thing about mass stain is if there's ever something wrong, you can just redo it. Okay. You can always just redefine it. All right. So now our model is analyzed. We need to do something with it. So what does that mean? Um, well, let's see. We can go to results. Let's go to node displacements. So like node 4, bam. Node 4 has a vertical displacement of 5.873 inches downward. And what's the deal with the rotation? What is that in? Radians. Okay. Degree rotations are always in ra or, or angle rotations are always in radians. So that's the default. For node 2, you get this rotation. Um, there's, there might be a little bit of a better way of seeing that because there's actually two rotations at node two because of the hinge, but we'll look at that here in a bit. How about reactions? Let's go to N1. N1, we have a horizontal reaction of zero, a vertical reaction of negative 30.9, so it's 30.9 kips going down, and a reaction of negative 73.15. That's 7,315 inch kips clockwise, okay? Remember, negative moments are clockwise. Now, here's the cool stuff. Now, everybody watch up here. I want to show you something. We're going to plot shear diagrams and moment diagrams, and there's a lot of stuff here on the screen, so I kind of want to make some stuff invisible. So I'm going to go to View, Labels. Let's take the loads off. View, labels, let's take the fixities off. 
Now, I did not delete them. The data is still there. I just made them invisible so that I can actually see what's going on. And I'm going to take the node and, and element labels off. Now, watch this. Results, diagrams, and let's do shear Y. Okay, we're doing shear because I want to see the shear diagram and Y because it's the change of loads along the Y direction. So we'll do shear Y. Hit apply. Boom, there's our shear diagram. Does that look the way the shear diagram should look for this beam? I have a linear shear region, right? A jump here, that's where that roller reaction is. I got no load, constant shear. And if I want to fill it in, I go down to the bottom, hit check mark fill, hit apply. Now it's pretty. It's colorful. What do you think? Yes? Is there a way to check the like, X displacement and stuff, like the length? Or is that, let's say it's the like, what? It's like a triangular load or something. Or a triangular load. A distributed load and the shear isn't really where the X should be. It's like you have to figure it out because it calculates where the X is. Oh, the maximum shear. The, the element should report the maximum moment is what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but you also have to remember mass hand can't do triangular loads anyways. So. <laughs> Sorry. Now, one thing we didn't do, but uh, I'll show you. If you go to view, dynamic rotate, you can do this. Oh, hold on. View. I know this is really scientific, right? really necessary. But watch this. If you go to view, defined views, front view, it puts it back. So, sorry, I just had to do that. Then what we'll do is we'll go to analysis, or results, diagrams, moment. We'll do moment Z, fill it, hit apply, boom. It doesn't look it, but this is parabolic. That's straight line. What's up with the numbers? Why is this so big? Why is that 2,400? Inch tips. Did I steal your thunder? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's, why is the moment zero here? Right here? Oh, there you go. It's like you're learning something about structures. I like it. View. Dynamic rotate because why not? Let me try something. View, define view, front view. Let's do dynamic zoom. It's kind of hard to see. But this is, I promise you, this is parabolic. I mean, you can kind of see how it's parabolic, but that's parabolic, that's straight line. So, and What you can do for display shape, we can go view, deflected shape. Now, what you got to do is you got to pick a scale. So let's do like a scale of 10, hit apply, and what it's doing is it's taking those displacements and it's amping them up a factor of 10, okay? What we also might do is we might go to, let's see, view, or sorry, file, create report. Let's do everything. Let's see what we get. So, yeah, so. So, all right, let me talk about that. I, I want to bring the homework up to explain this here a little bit, okay? First off, let, we'll talk about the homework here in a sec, but before we bring up the homework, does anybody have any questions? Okay. All 
Okay, so here's the homework assignment. All right, let's take the beam problem. Y'all recognize this beam problem? That's a problem y'all did for the homework assignment. That was 6-2. That was that super long homework assignment. Now I'm making you do it in mass hand to see if you got it right or not. Okay, so here's what I don't want. What I don't want is a report that's 12 pages long and I gotta find the needle in the haystack. You know what I mean? I have no problem whatsoever if you put the report in your submission. No problem with that. What I don't want is to have to find stuff. So when I ask for the support reactions, like honestly, here, I'll tell you what, I will show you one of the answers so that you can kind of see. Because I don't, I mean, the, what matters is that you do it. So here's the truss. And like, this is what I did, right? There's the answers right there, you know? No hunting, no, no expedition, anything like that. There's the answers, you know? I don't want to have to go through a, a needle in a haystack. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. I asked for a display shape. There's the display shape, so... Does that make sense? Is everybody else okay with that? One thing we'll also go ahead and do is this. Um, let me go back to Mastan. Here's the display shape. Let me hit Control F. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, and I didn't do this on the um, uh, in, in my lecture, but I'm going to do File Define Title. Like, let's look at the title. Let's say this is a cool picture. Okay, results. Let's do diagrams, deflected shape. Let's make it, I don't know, 15. Let's amp it up a little bit. File, print photo, desktop, let's call it Class photo dot tiff. Hit OK. And if you go to the desktop, now here's the photo. And look at the bottom. This is a cool picture. But th that what that is is your supposed to be your model title. So in, in the beginning of the handout, I said something like lecture 31 example problem. So you might put homework seven problem one or homework seven problem two but there it is you know it's a display shape to the the scale that was that I put a scale of 15 you put whatever scale is in the uh, in the handout for or in the assignment for the homework and there you go what what does everybody think is this hard easy I want what I want if you read the assignment I want two things. I want a single PDF, and I want your mass hand files. That's what I want. For the project, you are to submit three files. The CAD drawing, all your hand calculations, and the mass hand file. Your calculations, your hand calculations, whatever you get for deflection should match what you get in mass hand. I mean, you're modeling the structure that you're calculating, you should get the same answer. What do you think? Any questions? Starting Friday, I'm going to confuse you a little bit. We got one more big topic in this class before we do some uh, stuff near the end. And I'm going to prepare you. This one's tricky. This whole semester, I've given you a structure and said, here's the structure, here's the loads, analyze it. What if the loads move? How do you analyze the structure? Well, you would say do it again. 
right now. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being facetious when I say that. You, if I gave you a structure and put some loads on it, you'd analyze it. If I moved the loads, you'd analyze it again. Because it's a different problem at that point. But here's the thing. We structural engineers have to deal with structures that are subjected to loads that move. Can anybody give me an example? A bridge. We have a tool that we use to analyze structures when they are subjected to moving loads. It is called an influence line. An influence line is not a shear diagram or a moment diagram. And we'll say it again. An influence line is not a shear diagram or a moment diagram. I'm going to say it a third time. An influence line is not a shear diagram or a moment diagram, but they're going to look like them. Okay? We'll tell you right now, they're going to look very similar, but they're, they're different. They're actually inverses of one another. Um, they are incredibly easy to construct. Um, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Seeing it is what's a little tricky. I highly recommend that you bring rulers for the next few lectures. That's all I have. I will see you all on Friday.